For when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. He knew me, oh, yet he loved me, and he who only makes the heaven shine so unworthy, cause such mercy. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Oh, yes, he knew me. Yet he loved me. He who only made the heaven shine so unworthy caught such mercy when he was on the cross I was on his mind of love was on his face thorn was on his head the blood was on that scarlet robe stained in crimson red his eyes were on the crowd that day he looked ahead in time when he was on the cross. I was on his mind. He knew me. Oh, yet he loved me. heaven shine oh such unworthy <clears throat> did he love me when he was on the cross I was on his mind he shine so unworthy cause such mercy yet when he was on the cross I was on his mind yet when he was on the cross I was on his mind praise God praise God hallelujah hallelujah girl see Jesus in your footsteps every day can the world see the master in the things you do and say well is your light shining bright in this world you're living in does your testimony stand 
all the way to the end. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. Let the world know you're not ashamed of Him. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. Let your light shine bright and never let it grow dim. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. Let the world know you're not ashamed of Him. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. Let your light shine bright and never let it grow dim. Well, don't lose your vision in this world of toil and care. Be willing to bear your cross, my friend. Stand up for Jesus, whatever the cost. For souls are dying, and they're dying lost. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. Let the world know you're not ashamed of Him. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. Let your light shine bright and never let it grow dim. Well, don't lose your vision. Keep your light shining bright in this world of toil and care. Be willing to wear your cross, my friend. Stand up for Jesus, whatever the cost. For souls are dying, and they're dying lost. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. Let the world know you're not ashamed of Him. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. Let your light shine bright and never let it grow deep. Hallelujah. The 10th chapter, and we'll read the 39th to the 42nd verse, and then we'll turn to the Gospel of John, the 12th chapter, and the first three verses. Hallelujah. Praise God. Luke 10, 39, beginning. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Turning to the Gospel of John, the 12th chapter, and the first three verses. <clears throat> then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, 
with Lazarus, which, was, which had been dead when he raised from the dead, or whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment, and spicknered very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Let us thank him again tonight. Mighty God, again tonight, we thank you, Lord, tonight for the present good news. Hallelujah. Something that we can understand. I'm glad tonight, though we're not highly educated, yet I went to college, and, uh, you know, I had a teacher there tell me, Brother, that we could not understand the Bible without one year of Hebrew and two years of Greek. And he told me, he said, if you want to be successful and if you want to pass these tests in this class, you're going to have to follow my teaching. And brother, you know what happened? We crossed. <laughs> I said, brother, I said, when I came here, I said, I knew more about that than, than what you're trying to, uh, you know. I said, my Bible tells me that, uh, that it's written so simple that a child could understand. Right. Now, if, if, uh, if I had to know Hebrew, and there's nothing wrong with Hebrew. If I had to know Greek, there's nothing wrong with Greek. But I'm sure I wouldn't be where I'm at today because I have trouble with English. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I couldn't tell the difference. Sister Talbot helped me out a lot. I'd write letters to her when I was in the service, and I'd, put, I'd spell, uh, you know, I'm coming there, T-H-E-R-E, T-H-E-I-R. I, I, I just use the same thing. I write it out. <laughs> and she'd circle the letter, some of those words, and write back, and she'd say, now you're using the wrong word. You're using the wrong, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're not writing your sentences right. I thought, who cares? I'm getting the message over. Amen. Praise God. Whether it was T-H-E-R-E or T-H-E-I-R or what. I said, when we played, we went out and clumbed the tree. She said, there's no word in English, clumb. <laughs> you didn't clumb nothing. You went out and climbed. Uh, she'd been working on me 46 years, and she's still working on me. <laughs> Praise God. But I have Im improved a little, but I said all of that to say I still got some trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm saying that to say this. I don't know how many's here tonight, but <clears throat> we read a scripture, and the Bible tells us here in the Gospel of Luke, uh, the 40th verse, Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Now, here is a message. And Jesus answered and said unto Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. <clears throat> but he said, one thing is needful and Mary hath chosen that good part. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chosen that good part. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I've been in the ministry for a lot of years, and I don't profess to know it all. I'm saying, Lord, still help me to be more perfect. Help me to be perfected. Help me to reach out to others. Help me through the message and the ministry of your word that we can help someone else come and find this way and be more perfect. Praise God. But I know, looking over this congregation, some run the aisles. Some was shouting tonight. Some was crying. Was having a good time. But there's people here that's cumbered. There's people here that's troubled. Hallelujah. I'm not a prophet and I'm not going to prophesy. But I know where I came from. I know where I'm at. Hallelujah. We're all human. Praise God. And we come in from our home. Hallelujah. And we've got problems in the home. 
Children are having problems, marital problems, financial problems. <clears throat> There's all types of problems today. And we come to church, brother, and we sit down, and brother gets up, and he tries to prime, and he's pumping, and he's, he's teaching, and he's instructing. Why? That you can get your mind clear. We need to leave these situations at home. We need to leave some of our job problems at the job site. We come into the house of God that we can lay aside everything and that we can hear from God. Oh, saints of God, that we can go and that we can smell and breathe of the fragrances of God. Oh, hallelujah. Save me, perfect me, strengthen me, heal me. Lord, do a work within me. But you cannot come to the house of God and you cannot get into the presence where God wants you if your mind is cluttered and your heart is broken and when frustrated of all these cares of life. You cannot get the job done. That's why Jesus told Martha. She, he didn't say it, there's anything wrong with what you're doing. But he said, Mary, she has chosen the good part. The good part. The good part. Hallelujah. Praise God. As I said, you know, we come into the house of God seeking the good part. Hallelujah. Praise God. When I sought the Lord for the Holy Ghost, I prayed and I prayed. I prayed as hard as anyone could pray. I jumped and I shouted and I run a little bit. I did everything they told me to do. They said, get down and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And if you say Jesus fast enough, Lord, to take over and you'll get the Holy Ghost. Say amen, 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 amen. I learned those words without any trouble. Amen, amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. But I didn't get the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and there's nothing wrong with it, but it can become mechanics. It's a mechanical thing. <clears throat> and when I got the Holy Ghost, I got it without going through all of those, you know, elements. <clears throat> but I had one problem when I came to church. And I told Sister Talbot the first time I'd become acquainted with Pentecost, I said, bless God, <clears throat> and we'd sit there and Brother Ladder would preach. This was Brother Sam's father. And there was a, just a small church, and we'd sit there, <clears throat> and I knew he was gunning straight at me because there's only eight of us in the congregation. <laughs> and all of them were saved but me. That's what I thought. I didn't know who they were. But he would preach straight down, and he'd look right straight down at me, and he'd preach. And I'd get aggravated. I never said nothing, but I'd get such a terrible after service, and we'd go home, and I'd say, you know, don't ever invite me back. I don't want to go back. I was raised in one of those churches Brother Elder was preaching about this morning. The Baptist. You know. <laughs> I still got a brother that's on the board. <clears throat> and pray for him, you know. But you know, I said, I'm not going back. And don't ever invite me back. And I went out in the field, and I'd be running the tractors, working. I'd come in, I'd tell you, Sister Talbot, get the boys ready. And Ron and Dale were just real little then. I said, get them ready, we're going to church tonight. She said, I thought you said you wouldn't go back to church. I said, just get them ready, we're going to church. And see, I had a problem. Because I thought he was preaching to me. Only me. And I got aggravated. Well, I'd go back to church and the same thing happened again. Then went on and on and on. And I went out and I came back. I was frustrated. But you know what happened when I left all of that outside? That I said, Lord, take me and use me and do a work within me. Give me the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I wanted it more than anything else in the world. I got, be I got hungry and I began to get thirsty. My troubles was laid aside. Hallelujah. And I got the Holy Ghost. I've still got it today. Hallelujah. And I'm saying, Lord, give me more than I had yesterday. Give me some more than what I had yet last month. Give me more than I had last year. Lord, I need a refilling. Lord, I need another baptizing. Oh, God, 
And saints of God tonight, if you're here, I challenge you to get your mind clean. The Lord has got something better for you if you'll choose that good part. Praise God. <clears throat> There's a fellow that owns a Cadillac and Pontiac dealership in Peoria. <clears throat> and he comes on the radio with his advertisement. <clears throat> and he's got a little, um, I don't know if he's had a stroke. I don't know if he's got a, uh, a, a little bit of a speech impediment. <clears throat> but he'll come on and he'll advertise his automobiles. And then he'll, if you'll just come out to Neil Norton, he'd say, something good is going to happen to you. That's why he always finish his announcement, something good about going to happen to you. And you know what? If you'll clean your mind, lay aside all of these things that become differences, something good going about happen to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I say something good about going to happen to you. The Lord has promised. Hallelujah. I'd say the Lord has promised. We all, you know, all of these things I can't do. I can't do. It becomes such a problem that I can't do. Children have trouble in school. I can't get the math. I can't get my English. I can't get my history. I can't do all of these problems. I'm reminded of a teacher one time, and she had all these students. So this morning she gathered them together in the classroom. And she said, now we're going to do something different this morning. I want all of you students to get out a piece of paper. <clears throat> and she said, I want you to write down on this piece of paper everything that's bothering you, everything that you say you can't do, you're having trouble with, write it on this piece of paper. And she give them time. Just take your time. I want it all written out. So after they got it all written out, she said, all right, let's bring the papers. And she went out in the back of the schoolyard, and she said, here's the shovel. <clears throat> now she said, dig the hole. We're having a service, and we're going to bury all of these papers. We're going to bury all of these problems, all these things that you're having difficult with, we're going to bury them. So they dug the hole, and they put the papers in the hole and they covered it up and they had a little service out there. After they finished, they'd made a cross and they put a cross there. <clears throat> These old problems are died. They've died and we've buried them. We're going back into that classroom with a new mind, with new determination, with a new set of goals. We're going to, we're going to try something different. And you know, <clears throat> they went back into that classroom and things were different. They were different. Some of those doubts and some of those problems, they put aside, they buried them. And what does the Bible say? <clears throat> if we come to Him and, we're, and He forgives us of our sins and we confess of our sins and our failures, He'll put them into the sea of forgetfulness, not to be remembered to us or brought to us again. <laughs> Hallelujah. What we need to do, saints, is bury some things. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I remember we held a revival, and Dale remembers, in Anderson, California. I went there, and Brother Bledsoe, I believe, or, yeah, I think Brother Bledsoe was home mission work. <clears throat> and I said, where are we going to have the revival, brother? And some of them were storefront buildings and some churches. But he said, the only place I could find that we could have a service is at the mortuary. <laughs> and what do you think about it? I said, nothing. I don't, I don't think that's bad. I don't think it's a bad idea. So I had a big sign, revival, <clears throat> everyone's invited. And we went down and the mortician that owned the place, give me the key. And he said, You're, you can, he said, how long are you gonna be here? It's a week or maybe two weeks. <clears throat> he said, uh, You're, you've got liberty to the chapel. The only thing I ask is that you don't go into the embalmment room and go in, he had another room in the back where they kept the tents. <clears throat> and he said, I hope to try to keep the people out of there. I said, don't worry, we won't bother them. And so uh, we put the sign up, and uh, Brother Wakefield, he said, you know, he said, uh, I've really been praying for this revival. He said, I've prayed, and God has told me that there's going to be 17 families come into this church through this revival. Now, they had nobody, and 17 families come in, and God's going to 
bless them and save them and fill them with the Holy Ghost. And I said, brother, I said, I'm not wanting to punch your balloon. But I said, if God give you 17 families and you're just starting this, you wouldn't even know what to do with them. I said, if the Lord would give you one family in this revival and save them, you got something to work with. Because I learned a long time ago, if you got one, you got one problem. <laughs> and if you got a hundred, you got a hundred problems. Praise God. They're not all the same problems either, are they? <laughs> Hallelujah. And I said, if God would just give us one family. So we went out knocking doors and passing out literature and inviting people to the revival. And they said, brother, where's it at? We'll be glad to come. I said, down at the corner so-and-so at the mortuary. Boom. Mortuary? You're having a revival at the mortuary? I said, yes, sir. Jesus is still raising the dead. Hallelujah. <laughs> And he's still bringing souls to life in his name. Hallelujah. And I said, where better could we go than to the mortuary? Hallelujah. And I'm glad this church isn't the mortuary tonight. I'm glad it's full of fire. I'm glad it's got something moving the life within. Praise God. And you can come and be saved and you can receive an abundance of life tonight. Hallelujah. But in that revival, we got one family. And they confessed to their sin. I don't remember if they were baptized or not. But it was a start, starting stone or stepping stone, a starting place. And the, as far as I know, the church is going on even yet today. Praise God. It's built. It's been building and moving on. <clears throat> but it all started working with somebody's problems. Hallelujah. And <clears throat> it starts working with individuals it starts working with a troubled mind it starts working with a heart that's that's corrupt <clears throat> there's all different situations out there but oh saints of god i'm glad to know one hallelujah that's still able to set the captive free <laughs> praise god praise god my bible tells me there's a number of people that's had trouble job was a great man of god and Job was tried and tested by the devil himself. And even Job's wife came to him when he was in the ash pit and covered with boils and sores and said, Job, why not curse God and die? Oh, if I were you, Job, I'd just forget everything. Oh, but Job said, though God slay me, yet I'll trust him. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, Job wasn't going to let the devil come in. Job wasn't going to let the devil conquer his mind. Job wasn't going to let him defeat his purpose. Oh, God, slay me, yet I will trust him. Oh, saints of God, there's nothing too hard for God. God is on the throne. God is moving today. God is saving people. Oh, hallelujah. And all we've got to do is look and trust in him. Praise God. The blind man. The blind man couldn't see. But when he heard Jesus was coming, he done something about it. Hallelujah. Now we can preach the word. We can minister. We can, we can teach and we can instruct. But you know, the Bible talks about something that we must do for ourselves. Hallelujah. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Praise God, faith without works is dead. There are times you've got to move out. <clears throat> and there are times that you've got to uh, trust God. You exercise faith. I, as I said in revival, we had a constant revival for three months. I never missed a service. <clears throat> Whether it was winter time or what, we went on. I was welding a John Deere. <clears throat> and I was farming uh, during uh, the two farms. <clears throat> and it was treading on. But every night we went to church. Every night I went to the altar. Every night I prayed. Every night I thanked God for what he had done for me. Hallelujah. And I told Sister Talbot, I said, bless God with all these problems we've had, with all the frustration of the mind, two farms, a farming, and two landlords, a foreman at the shop I had to satisfy, a wife at home. <laughs> Praise God. She used to tell me, I've got pictures. And I would, I would get seven to nine hours sleep in a week. And, I, and I'd come home from work. 
And I'd say, have breakfast ready. I was working third shift. I said, breakfast ready, get it ready. And I'd hurry up and change my clothes and I'd eat breakfast and in the field and I'd work in the field until, uh, <clears throat> until I come in to do chores. And then every Monday night I went to uh, night school for under the GI Bill. So one night a week I went to school, I come home from school, change clothes, I have my dinner bucket ready, grab the bucket and back to work. Never, never hit the bed. Most of the time Sunday afternoons where I'd catch my sleep. We'd go to church, we'd sit there in church and, and Brother Ladder was a preaching and I'd be nodding, you know, and, and she'd oh, right in the ribs. What are you doing? Wake up. I'd go home, go to bed for a little bit and go out and do chores and back to work. Did that for three and a half years, trying to get ahead. I had, but the harder I worked and the longer I went, the worse things got. But when I found the Lord, I went to church with all of these things impressing on my mind. Hallelujah. But I told Sister Talbot, tomorrow night, when we go to church, I'm going and I'm staying until I get the Holy Ghost. I've been here for three months. And it's time something happens. And I went in that night, and about midnight that night, February the 4th, 1962. Hallelujah. Or 1960. In February, on February the 14th, that's, a, that's a, uh, Valentine's Day, isn't it? Right. Valentine's Day. And I went in, and I began to worship. I began to sing at about midnight, the midnight hour. Isn't it wonderful what happens at the midnight hour? Hallelujah. The jailhouse opened the doors. The bars fell off. The, 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 all of everything else came loose. Praise God. And my coat came off. And it threw it, I threw it halfway across the sanctuary. And I began to leap and jump and shout. And the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'm here to say it's more good today than it was back then. That was the starting place. Hallelujah. That's where I began. Hallelujah. That's where God cleaned my mind and satisfied my heart and blessed my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. But I'm, I've told many, many saints across the land it's necessary for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. You can't make it without it. But just the one time isn't sufficient. You need to be refilled. Right. Refilled. Right. Now, I wish I could drive my car all the way from home here. <clears throat> and I drove, I filled up at home, and I'm, I could have came to Kansas City. But I didn't want to get involved in traffic in Kansas City, so I filled up in Independence, Missouri. And when I got here, I still had a three quarters of a tank of fuel. And I thought that was pretty good. But I knew I couldn't make it on one tank. And saints, you know, we can say, thank God he filled me 40 long years ago. Bless his dear name. How many times have you been refilled since then? Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, listen, are you cumbered about? Are you worried about the family, the children? Are you worried about the financial part of your uh, situation? Are you worried about your automobile breaking down? Or are you cumbered down like Martha with all of these things? But Mary's got the better part. Mary's got a hold of the good thing. And saints of God tonight, hallelujah, his blessings are secure. His blessings are rich. We've got a hold of the better things tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're like blind Bartimaeus. We were blind, but now we see. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The woman that had the issue of blood. Yes. We were as good as dead, but he healed us. Yes. Praise God. Who? Who? She said, touch me. Who touched, Who touched me? And one of the boys said, anyone could have touched you, the crowd that's here. Jesus said, no, there was someone touched me, for I felt the virtue leaving my body. Saints of God, I'm telling you, if you go after the better part tonight, you can be touched, you can be filled, you can be cleansed, you can be healed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, for the better part is here tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. 
Listen, Jesus is the water walker. Jesus is the stone roller. Jesus is the sea calmer. Hallelujah. Jesus is the eye opener. Hallelujah. He's the miracle worker. He's the Holy Ghost filler. Hallelujah. He's the one that, uh, that uh, remit your sins. Hallelujah. When you confess them before him. Praise God. But none of these things can happen. They can, all of these other things can hinder you. But when you come and confess before him. Hallelujah. He's able and faithful to deliver you. And forgive you of all your trespasses and sins. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad tonight for the better part? Oh, Mary, she had chosen, she had chosen that good part. Hallelujah. Praise God. I've told a lot of people you haven't lived until you have lived for the Lord. Praise God. One hasn't lived until you lived for the Lord. Praise God. Well, you know, I feel kind of uncomfortable. I feel like if I just go and let go, somebody uh, make fun of me. I, I, I said, I said Dude, you don't see me down here on the carpet. <clears throat> and I don't know when it had been cleaned because every time they got down there and began to praise God and, and bless that carpet, there was a dust storm. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I said, you're not going to see me get down there and get in that carpet and all that dust and somebody spit in my face and all that. All of these things was holding me back. But when I said, the dust don't make any difference. And the saliva don't make any difference either. Hallelujah, but I'm going after what I can get tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus my Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going after it. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to stop till I get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> Glory to God. Think about what we have right at, right at our fingertips. Hallelujah. This word becomes life. This word becomes eternal. Heaven and earth is going to pass away, but my word shall what? not pass away it is going to be that that takes us on hallelujah hallelujah praise God that doctor that physician he told me hallelujah he said you won't know how much better you're going to feel after you recover from surgery and I got home Sunday afternoon about four o'clock and uh, they didn't even send me any pain pills I said, I'm, all, I'm going to be all right and I made it through the Wednesday or Friday. Friday night, the telephone rang. And this fellow, he called. He said, uh, you haven't forgot about us, have you? I said, who is it? And he told me. You know, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, Saturday, he said, you've got a, a, a wedding to perform, you know. And here I am. And uh, you know, and I said, well, I, I said, that's next week. He said, no. He said, that's tomorrow morning. I said, well, let me call a couple ministers and see if I can get somebody to go and help you out. And. But if I can't get anyone, I'll be there. I'll do it. So I called and couldn't make no connection. So I called him back and I said, I have no way been able to get a hold of anybody. And if you'll come with a, an automobile that can haul me down there and bring me home, I'll go ahead and perform the ceremony. So they came with some kind of a Ford van and I didn't have to get up or down. I just backed in and sit down and turned around and they shut the door and away we went. And went to the wedding. Had a good time, performed the ceremony. And after a while, I sat there for, and I stayed and visited for about 30 minutes. And, and they come and they said, you ready to go home yet? I said, yeah, I'm ready to go home. I went back out and I got in the van. They shut the door and took me back home. And I've been going ever since. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the doctor, he said, you're going to feel so much better than what you've ever felt. Before. You won't know how much good you're going to feel. I said, well, I'll soon be 68. And since then, I've already passed that mark. And, uh, and I said, now, I'll be soon 68, and you're telling me that I feel so much better, you're going to guarantee me another 60 years, huh? <laughs> he just looked at me, and he's a real serious surgeon. He's real busy. He don't have time for cut-up, but I like to give him bad time. 
And I got him to grin two times in two weeks. <laughs> and he just kind of grinned at me and turned around and walked away. He wouldn't guarantee me anything. <clears throat> he, all he told me, I just going to feel a lot better than I felt before. And that, that has happened. <laughs> I feel better. But it's still in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. If God be for us, who can be against us? Praise God. And we all get up in the mornings with aches and pains. There's some of you here that's not 68 yet. And you got aches and pains. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you know, if we had a choice, sometimes we'd stay at home. But oh, when we think about how good God has been. Hallelujah. And Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Oh, bless that name of Jesus. And we begin to let the Lord have his way. We're going to say, cast aside those weights that does so easily beset us. And let us begin to run this race with patience. Hallelujah. Because I have chosen the good part. I have got a hold of the best thing. There's a song we used to sing, the best is yet to come. Saints of God, the, this troubled world that we're living in, it's about to turn things around. Jesus is coming quick. He's coming one of these days. Hallelujah. And I don't believe the time is uh, lengthy. I believe our time is short. Hallelujah. The midnight hour is about to happen. Hallelujah. He's going to step out on the clouds of glory. And he's going to say, church, come on home. Hallelujah. Come on home. And you're not going nowhere if you're cumbered down with all of these things. Saints of God, it's time to let them go. It's time to put them behind. It's time to get a hold of the horns of the altar. It's time to repent. It's time to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. If the water, if you need the water, the water's troubled. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's no thing that's too hard for God. Revival. 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 Hallelujah. This is revival time. I used to go and I'd tell the saints when we'd go into church, I'd say this is going to be Bible revival. Bible revival. I didn't bring a revival in my briefcase. I don't have a program. I haven't got an outline. We're just trusting the Lord. Hallelujah. That the fires can become kindled. That you can be relieved of your condition. And you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Then you can be on the highway to heaven. Praise God. And they used to sit and look at me. And I said, remember, when you're looking at me, I'm looking at you. I'm watching you as you watch me. But we're coming together in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's wonderful to meet here, but what, what a day that's going to be on the other side. Hallelujah. Saints of God, Sister Elder, won't it be wonderful there? Praise God. Praise God. There's a lot of people that's going on before us. Hallelujah. But I'm expecting to go in the rapture. Praise God. I'm looking for the rapture to take place. One of these days, the clouds of heaven are going to split open. And it might be tomorrow. We have no promise when. Hallelujah. But saints, if you'll, and friend, tonight, if you'll desire and choose that good part, you can go with us. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can be on that glory train or that glory plane. Hallelujah. Praise God. Won't it be wonderful? Hallelujah. Take that trip to glory. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Praise God. Jesus is coming. My mother used to work all day on Saturday and she was a cripple. She got around the wheelchair or else on crutches. And just about every Sunday, we had a lot of family come out to the farm and visit. And she would fry chickens and she would, she would bake cakes and she would bake pies and she would make all kinds of things, cookies and bread. And she said, I'm getting everything ready for the dinner tomorrow. Uh, my daughter's coming, my aunts and my uncles and my brothers and my sister-in-laws are coming. We're going to have us a time. And she said, you know, <clears throat> and she said, I don't mind working, preparing the meal. What bothers me is if 
they don't sit down to eat. Hallelujah. You know, the, the table is set on the other side. Praise God. I believe the marriage supper, I believe it's all prepared. Jesus has been, pre been preparing this for a, some time. Let's not discourage him. Let's be there. Hallelujah. Let's gather around the table of the Lord and let's rejoice for the eons of eternity. Oh, let's be, let's hear him say, well done, each and every one. Oh, let's hear him say, enter into the place of rest. Hallelujah. Oh, saints of God, because there's a the better part tonight that we can have. You can have it. It's, a, it's an assurance and insurance to each and every one tonight. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 1 and 4, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. It's for you. It's for you. An inheritance uncorruptible, undefiled and fadeth not away. That's more than they can say about the land we live in today. <clears throat> Reserved in heaven for you. Are you ready tonight? Are you ready tonight? There's a sign that's still on the First Baptist Church in Geneseo. My dad had it made years ago. And it, uh, it lights up every night. It says, Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Jesus is coming. Are you ready? And as we stand tonight, are you ready? Are you ready? If he was to come tonight, has your mind been cleared yet? Are you cumbered with all of these situations that exist? There's too many things to number, too many things to talk about or call on. There's so many things that's happening out there. But we're serving a big God tonight that's able to undertake every situation. Hallelujah. Clean that mind. Heal that heart. Hallelujah. Save that soul. Fill it with the Holy Ghost. That's the kind of God we're serving tonight. Let's just thank Him tonight again. Oh, hallelujah. With joy, He'll welcome returning. It may be more, maybe night or noon. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. I know He's coming. coming. Coming so soon, he's coming soon <clears throat> with joy. He'll welcome him. Oh, uh, yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. I wonder what excuse you'll use. If you miss the rapture, I wonder what excuse you'll use. Why you spurned his house, why you spurned his servant, why you spurned his messenger. Oh God, or will you come to the altar and fall? Seek his face and search out his ways. Oh, yeah, this is not between you and me. This is between He's you and him. Between you and Jesus tonight. And he is coming. He is coming. He is coming. He is coming. His. Mary chose the good things of life. What's your choice tonight? Mary made the right choice. Mary made the good choice. choosing tonight are you making the right choice we know hallelujah he's or do you choose another way soon. oh 
Lord God Almighty, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome I know that it might be more, or it might be new. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said that he is coming. coming soon. Oh, yes. He's it's time to talk to God. Make sure you're ready. God has given some of you dreams about his coming. Oh, you're going to be ready when he comes. Hallelujah. It may be more. It may be night or noon. We know he's coming soon. Ah, yes, Jesus Christ in your name. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We'll welcome his return. Uh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It may be hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It may be. Christ in your name, Lord. Oh, Lord, I know he's come. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus, 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 Jesus. He's coming. Hallelujah. It may be more. It may be night or noon. I know. Hallelujah. Mean soon with joy, gonna welcome his returning. Oh, it may.
God joy, this glorious hope of boards. Oh, that soon, oh, wondrous truth sublime, he shall reign. King of kings and Lord of lords, I know he's coming soon, oh yes he's coming, he's coming soon, with joy. wonder how many of them heard Noah preach I wonder how many of them said you know I believe that old man I believe I believe what he says probably God is going to come and destroy the world but when the call came to get in the boat they just couldn't stir themselves up. Said, I'm just not ready yet for all of that. I'm going to tell you, as I look around, even in this tiny congregation tonight, I see kids and people that says, I've heard this so much. I'm really tired of hearing it. I expect you to believe that stuff. I'm going to tell you something. One morning you're going to wake up and the real world is going to fall in on you like you never dreamed. Oh, I just think if you're baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going in the rapture. Not necessarily. This preacher said you got to be full of the Holy Ghost what he preached tonight. God's coming after them that's filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled and refilled and filled and filled until they're so full that they just love him and they're looking for his appearing. They love to sing about him. They love to read his word. They love to pray to him. They love to sit in his presence. They love to worship him. Everything about him is just wonderful and special and joy. Brother Elder, do you live in that world? <laughs> All day long I'm praising him. All day long I'm talking to him. All day long I'm loving him. All day you would not believe what I've told God in the last week. When you get my age and this brother's age, you look back down the road and you see all the wonderful things that God 
delivered you from that you thought you was a big boy and took care of yourself. But God's had mercy on you. Praise God. I've never had no heart surgery, but every person I ever talked to that's had heart surgery had an experience with God that you don't have in other surgeries. There's something about working on that heart takes you closer to heaven than you've ever been in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. I wouldn't want to go there without God. Amen. And I'll tell you one thing. I see people that's been there, they have a reality about them. A reality that I want in my life. I don't need to go to heart surgery to find it, but I'm going to tell you I want it anyhow. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Just as sure as I'm alive and talking to you right now, the Lord's coming after His church. And I'd hate to be out there this week goofing off. That's the reason why I'm not even one little bit excited about that fair. I may take my grandkids out there one evening and let them get excited about it. Their daddy's not too excited about them getting excited about it, so I'm not going to try to surpass their daddy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I just tell you, things of this world don't matter anymore. What really matters to me is that I'm ready for the coming of the Lord. Because he definitely is coming. Hallelujah. He's going to have to come and get his church pretty soon. He ain't going to have no choice. Praise God. And I believe, I believe the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is coming to a fulfillment in the United States of America. I want to tell you 